Hey you bike jerks, this is John and you're watching the Yellow Sheldon. So tonight I have an interesting one from White Industries. Um, this is, wow, it's a hell of a mess. And uh, when we get a little deeper into it, you'll be able to tell why it wasn't very successful. Um, you know, on its face, I'm really into the idea of American-made derailleurs. Uh, you know, back in the mid-90s, uh, we had Paul Component Engineering, White Industries, uh, I think it, Joe's Brakes, Precision Billet. All these companies were trying to make an American-made derailleur that was even a quarter as good as Shimano's garbage derailleurs. Um, and, you know, with varying degrees of success. So, you know, on one hand, we had stuff like this Precision Billet derailleur here. So... You know, these were, more or less, uh, a parallelogram derailleur of reasonable design. Cage has a coil spring in it. It's got the tested and time-honored uh, parallelogram and, well, drop parallelogram. And yeah, they still, as far as I know, didn't work that well. So, nice try. A for effort. I think a company called Toronto Cycles is still selling custom-made precision billet derailleurs, and maybe they have all the remaining parts from this company, and they'll build you one uh, in every flavor of the rainbow. Anyway, nice trick bicycle stuff, and I remember, trust me, it looked better than it worked. You could take a, a, a Shimano RSX derailleur, and it would generally shift better than most of these things. So what we have... This is the LMDS from White Industries. It is, why is it so blown out? It is a, an attempt to make a completely new derailleur design. Um, you know, there have been other designs uh, that run on a shaft like this. Reference my video on the Mavic Zap derailleur. But, uh, you know, this was very unique in many ways. Some good, some bad. Um, this came out in about 1997, maybe maybe was made for about a year, and, um, you know, well, let's get into it. This was designed by Doug White of White Industries and Frank Berto. Not really sure who that is, probably an engineer looking at how this thing is put together. And, uh, yeah, they came up with some pretty unique stuff. Um, See, the problem is, is that a lot of their unique stuff, it's the antithesis of rugged, user serviceable, and dependable. I mean, all of the hardware on here is 1.5 mil hex head. Here's the shifter, I'll, I'll give you an example. These teeny tiny little guys here, these tiny little screws, that is what you have to remove to get at your cables. Gotta remove these little things. Now, never mind the fact that most pocket tools of the day didn't have anything close to an Allen wrench this size. But let's say you have to replace your cable, which, you know, I'm really doubtful that you could do that on the side of the road with this system. Um, you are gonna lose this. 100%. You're gonna lose this. Um, so, this beautiful art piece like derailleur uh, it runs along this double shaft and it does it in a really strange way those are bearings rather than having an inner race the shaft acts as the inner race for these bearings and so they slide very very nicely along this shaft you have a pulley here you've got in and out cables, uh, cable stops, and this uses, well, it uses one very special cable, but it's very similar to the roll-off uh, speed hub double cable design. Two ports, one exit and one return port on both shifters. You have a special cable, a very special cable, custom cable, with a tiny three millimeter round head. Now this cable needed to be God knows how long, perhaps 
as long as a tandem cable, maybe even longer than that, because what it does is it nests inside of the twist shifter. There's a cap here. Underneath of this bolt head in this little recess here. And it goes all the way out. All the way out this port, all the way down to your derailleur. Once there, it enters this stop. Crosses this area, goes through this hole. Comes out here, goes over this pulley, goes into this hole, goes all the way across the shafts again, through this, out here, and out the exit port here. Once leaving there, you run it all the way back up your bicycle, back into the shifter to be clamped here. So, it's sort of a push-pull type, where you're always exerting pressure on it, it just depends on from which direction. Now the detents are achieved exactly how I would do it if I was going to CNC machine some stuff in my, in my garage or my small company. Because all you need to do is use a ball bearing detent. You see this a lot on small, small uh, run productions of, of things that I play with, knives shifters. Sometimes you see this in gun parts. So at the bottom of that hole, there's a ball bearing. The spring is on top, and this set screw applies pressure to it. And there are corresponding divots in the bottom of this shifter. Remove two more of these ludicrous 1.5 millimeter screws. And you can see we have our small recesses for the ball bearing. And it goes click into each one of them. So, problem number one, custom cables. I mean, you guys are the designers, and I don't mean to be too critical, because honestly, like, what have I built in my life? Lots of, lots of, uh, of kludge together hacky shit, no doubt, but I've never built anything this beautiful. But, you know, the whole idea when you build something that is supposed to be durable is, one, if you can if you can swing it, you want toolless assembly, disassembly, and service. You know, if you look at a lot of rifles, for instance, you'll see that they have captive cross pins. So rather than use a screw, what they'll do is they'll have a little cross pin, and you push it through with the head of a round or a screwdriver or your keys, and you can disassemble the gun and field clean it. I've seen a lot of knives that operate in the same principle. You've got, you know, one flathead screw that you can disassemble it with a coin if you like. Um, I'm just really added complexity and uh, you know if you make it complex and then the parts that you use aren't particularly robust I see problems in the future now I just wonder what the uh, sort of design parameters for this were you know these are very small screws they use two of them I feel like they could have dovetailed it in a way where the two sides click together and you needed one screw not four Again, criticisms from a guy who didn't make the thing. But uh, it's not like you're going to be in Moab or, or, or mountain biking in some, some beautiful place, some, you know, uh, some North Shore trails up, up uh, in Canada, and walk into the local bike shop and be able to buy this cable. So you have your cable. It's strung all the way from front to back, doubled up, and clamped down again. And you will set up 
your limits using, again, 1.5 millimeter screws. These little set screws stop the cage from moving past where the screw sits. Um, they're not Loctite or anything, they have no means of staying in place, so, I mean, I definitely, if I was running one of these back in the day, would have used some blue Loctite. Um, I am guessing, from the amount of holes that are drilled in this, that you are able to adjust the spring tension. This, this derailleur spring tension is out of control. You know, I have a hard time demonstrating how it functions because of how strong the spring tension is. So, my guess is that you could actually put it in any of these slots to get it to work. I, you know, watching this video, I want you to take what I say with a grain of salt. My, uh, my criticisms of this are coming from a guy who I wasn't there. I don't really understand what they were trying to achieve here aside from unique, uh, sort of flagship engineering. Kind of a big F you to Japan to say, yeah, you make derailers? Check out this derailleur. Dum dum. <laughs> um, the front derailleur is pretty interesting as well. Um, what you have is you were you were meant to supply your own derailleur. Um, there were there were derailleurs that worked with it, and you remove the derailleur's return spring. You remove the derailleur's return spring, and you bolt on a pulley and a clamp system. So you basically mod the derailleur you had already with you know Shimano derailleur whatever you had. Um, you would mod it to run off the same principle as this. And you would use another one of those continuous cables down to your front derailleur through the bolted-on pulley system and back up. All in all, I'm, it's just gorgeous stuff to hold. You know, we used to make beautiful, sometimes useful stuff in this country. And it seems like outside of the... Uh, the realm of some really boutique stuff, which, again, this might have been pretty boutique in the day, but I remember seeing it in all the magazines. It was getting pushed really hard, um, especially along with the uh, the, the uh, Paul ones. Um, yeah, it's bold. There, there, it's, it is very bold that Doug White said, hey, we're going to do this. It's going to have lots and lots of moving parts. We're not going to make a copy of anyone else's derailleur we're going to break the mold with this one. So, mad, mad kudos to White Industries for even attempting this. Um, I would like, at some point, to, to test ride a bicycle that has these installed. And, I mean, it's not out of my power to do that. I have the setup here. I can fabric cobble a, an extra line. I can take a tandem cable and just grind off, cut, or solder put a solder ball on the end of it to make it function at least for a couple rides. Um, if you've ever ridden this setup, if you've ever taken a trip with the uh, LMDS White Industries uh, group, I suppose, I'd love to see it in the comments. Uh, what was it like? Did it break down every 10 miles? Was it solid as a rock? Was it durable? You know, I've, I've just dicked around with so much stuff over the years. When you see something with teeny little fasteners and these are sealed, right? But mountain biking's real muddy. And I can imagine all kinds of schmoo getting stuck to the shaft and just traveling through there. I mean, you know, this is basically like suspension fork. You have some seals there, but, you know, there's no wipers. There's no... There's just a, a rubber... It's like a 2RS uh, cartridge bearing. Um, it's going to get absolutely knackered in there. And, you know, even now... I don't know if you can hear that. It's very, very, very rough. Yeah, I, I had a lot to say about this derailleur when I was looking at it. It's not coming through well on camera because it's just, it's baffling, and I don't want to sound like an expert. I am literally taking this stuff apart in front of the camera right now, and, uh, you know, I've read a few preliminary blog posts. Uh, there's a wonderful resource for derailers called Disraeli Gears. Um, if you're into derailers, and I definitely am, uh, the, the owner of that site has, has a massive collection of beautifully photographed and described um, antique to modern derailers. Um, they're very beautifully done. So, thanks for watching. 
wish I could say more nice things about this, but just about nothing in the museum case here was a success. I mean, almost nothing. We have anno cranks that cracked. Um, we've got CNC stems that blew up. We've got failed derailleur systems. Uh, I mean, even the big boys like Campagnolo failed utterly at some products. I mean, they had grip shifters that covered the entire grip. So when you hit a bump, you just dump the cassette. Anyway, that's it for tonight. I just wanted to pop off a quick video before I went home for the evening. Um, how about this? Angelic Baroque Amazing Derailleur and Shifter Setup. Night, 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 night.